Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and you may have noticed in the last few episodes a large table-shaped object here in the front of the garage very much getting in the way. And I thought it was probably about time that I actually cleared this table and looked at what was underneath all of the mess, basically, the scrap metal which is waiting to go off to the uh, recycling place and weigh in for a bit of cash, and have a look at getting this car started because it's been far too long. And after the last attempts to make it go, James from Nitro Silvia came around and we couldn't get the thing to fire. It was cranking over really well, just wasn't firing. And everyone keeps asking me, why didn't it work? And well, I think I have finally figured it out. I'm gonna clear up this mess and uh, yeah, hopefully maybe see a fire. Maybe not a start, maybe just a spark from a plug and a, a boom and a bang and a way. Well, hey, who knows? Let's get busy. Wonder where that had gone. Right, the scrap metal can stay there for a while. It's actually quite a lot of it. We've got the shock absorbers from the Crown Vic, we've got brake calipers from the Vic and the Rover, and we've got bits of my actual front door as well when the lock broke the other day. So yeah, it's been an interesting selection of scrap metal. Oh, and some taps we have to change. So that all needs to go off and get weighed in as soon as possible. It can live there until I get to the point of getting underneath the car. And by the way, I hope you're enjoying the sartorial elegance of the 1990s flared cords, which were many years ago actually quite cool. Yeah, I've left my uh, nice Dickies work trousers up at the barn, so I'm now working in basically old decorating clothes. Now, the last time when we tried to crank this over with James here, it was cranking very easily, and a few people did actually comment, it sounds like you've not got any compression. And these are people who I guess know more about what they're talking about than I do. And at first I was like, well, that's mental. Everything's working fine. The valves are good. The rockers are turning as they should. There's no reason for it not to have compression. It surely must be just not fuel coming through. Anyway, I thought I'd go and double check that. So I went and got myself a compression tester, which is here on the engine. And this result you can see just here on the screen now is the result I got when I cranked the thing over. Knowing now that we've got zero compression on this thing, um, that asks the question, why is there zero compression? That's probably a bad thing. Cars do need at least some compression on one or two cylinders to, to run even just a little bit. So we'll put the compression tester to one side and go and fetch the next tool, the Wi-Fi endoscope. We've got all the probey tools in this channel. We had the big extendy alien probe thing last week. Now we've got the camera on a stick. And this thing, which actually has a little screw on mirror so you can look like a periscope up inside things. Guess what it found? The valves aren't shutting completely. Little tiny gap between the valve and the cylinder head. That means no compression. Guess what, you guys are right, sorry. I shouldn't have called you all the names I called you for being clever clogs Which means I didn't do something right. And it was a really simple thing I didn't do right because there was an extra bit of this engine which I lost. And it took me a while to figure out where it had gone. And eventually I found it on the uh, desk. I mean, I can't believe looking around this garage, anything would go missing. How can it possibly be an untidy mess where you can't find stuff? I'm now looking at the engine bay, looking at, the rocker cover, wondering what I did with the rocker cover screws. So hold that back on again. It'll be here somewhere. Yeah, so I'm, I had lost these little packets of shims, pedal stool shims that go underneath the rocker. And I forgot to do the little stage where you put a bit of um, welding wire underneath the bobbles on the end of the push rods for the rockers just to check how much clearance you got and I didn't do that. I didn't realize I'd left it too tight. And so what I need to do is unbolt these four bolts on each of the rockers, put these shims in, and butter bing, we've got ourselves a working engine, in theory. So I've just been winding these things off a little at a time and I've got them quite loose now. So I'm taking the pressure off from the springs underneath them in a way that's not gonna um, damage the the rocker shaft itself. Right, now I'm definitely going to be wanting some gloves because this is all very oily. Gloves, where are you? Right. And there are three sizes of shim that come with the packet which I had completely lost. The baby ones, the mama bears and the daddy bears. But I think looking at 
that engine, it's going to be the Daddy Bears, because don't forget, this engine has had the head skimmed on it, so it's not just the wear in the rockers, it's also the, uh, I can't do this without nails, um, it's not just the wear in the rockers, it's also the head being skimmed smaller, so we need to take that up with these things. So we lift this off, simple as that. Oh, this rocker, this um, has actually got a little bit rusty. I'm going to give that a little bit of a polish with some very fine stuff to make that not be rusty in the engine. Hold on. So next up, we've got our little shims. We've got four of them, obviously, because there are four of these. And they have got holes for an oil way, so it doesn't really matter which way around you put them in because the oil way will always be available to it. Get that? In they go. Then put that back on, being careful to make sure that the holes are all lined up correctly and the push rods are all back as they should be as well. I'm going to start tightening this thing down. As you do, make sure the oil weight is definitely 100% clear. Now you've got to torque this up to three, then to eight newton meters. I don't have a torque wrench that goes down to three, so I'm starting at five, which is finger to less than finger tight by the feel of it. Wow. That feels like way too loose to be anywhere near beginning with. And then, God, that's tight, not, not tight at all. Yeah, so loose. Wow, done. That does not feel anywhere near tight enough. Right, so, now I've got the Wi-Fi endoscope running again. Let's have a look up inside and see if we've got closed cylinders or not. Make sure that it's screwed on properly. Don't want to be dropping that inside the cylinder head. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but I think they're closed, so let's go for it and do the other side as well. Right, let's do the other side as well. Hopefully, this is all be good. And we'll crank this over by hand in a minute, make sure nothing's making horrible clunky noises. And then we'll all be good to go. It is reassuringly oily as I'm undoing these things, and the little pedestals are lifting away from the cylinder head. It's reassuring how much clean, fresh oil is seeping out as well, which means that the oil ways are clear, oil is pumping. The engine probably won't lunge itself when I start it, if I start it. Let's get my little shimmy things in there. This is going easily enough that I'm very concerned that this is completely wrong. Right, so in we go with our Five. And then up to eight. That doesn't seem like anywhere near enough. Right, let's try and give this thing a turn. I think. I think. Do you know what? I think we're good. I'm going to risk connecting the battery and giving it a quick turn on the starter motor. Let's turn the key and see what happens. Well, I didn't hear any horrible noises, so I want to call that good. Next up, let's see if we get any compression now. Nothing but a horrible noise when we cranked it. Now let's crank it and see if anything good happens there. Yes, we have got to about 70 PSI. That is a good thing. Fantastic. We've got compression on this engine, which means chances are it'll start. I'm going to uh, put the carburetors back on, reconnect all the swipe plugs and leads, and see where we go from there. Fingers firmly crossed. Just trying to remember how all of this goes back together again, because oh my god, it's a jigsaw that is no fun. Uh, this all goes at the back, doesn't it? Which means that has to go that side. 
and the pipes go on the front. That's all bolted on. Honestly, SU make it so difficult to do that. It's just unnecessarily tricky. Now it's got to remember how all of these little uh, things go together. Clip, clip. Clip, clip. Uh, now fuel lines. Right, sparkling plugs go back into the engine. Now the rocker covers, the engine is coming back together quite nicely. Well, you know what, I kind of feel like we've done everything. Rocker covers are back on, uh, HT leads are back on, the spark plugs are connected, we've spun it over and made sure everything's working. All the uh, gubbins is connected on the back of there, that's been tightened up, it's um, five eighths and a half inch to tighten that thing. Our fuel system is connected. I don't think there's anything left to do now. Let's just get it, let's just try and fire it up, see what happens. This has been a very long time coming and I'm actually kind of nervous about doing this, but past the point of caring in other ways. So let's just turn the key and see what happens. Okay, not much is happening yet. Let's give it a quick blast of easy start. I thought I heard a cough that time. I'm gonna go and get a jump start pack to give it a bit of extra boost. It's a brand new battery, but I'm gonna give it some extra boost just to give it some oomph. Right, so I've got the jump pack hooked up again. Let's hope for the best now. Fingers crossed some more. Why is it not firing? We had a couple of little coughs there. I can't get to the accelerator because it's on that side of the car. Um, what can I wedge that with? Yeah, plastic thing can hold the throttle open for me. Maybe that'll make a difference. It did cough a little tiny bit. Hear the fuel pump. It coughed a tiny bit again, just not quite going. Oh, it sounds like it's nearly going, but it's not quite. I don't know why. What I need to know is if that's actually sparking or not, because I can, I can't see that from the driver's place. So that orange indicator thing flashes like there is a spark happening, which is positive, so we can only assume there is a spark. But I'm just going to check that there's fuel coming through. I can definitely smell fuel. Hmm. That doesn't look like it's completely filling up with fuel. Ah, okay. I think I've figured out the problem. Well, for a problem, I've run out of petrol here. Well, there's a spot of irony. Going down to collect some petrol in the electric van. Right, we have Zoe'd on down to the local petrol station, got ourselves a can of new juice. Battery's been on charge in the meantime. Let's see if we're pumping fuel now. I think all this stuff was working when James was here, Nitro Sylvia, before. 
So this is the fuel filter. Okay, let's um, slacken off these pipes and see if any fuel's coming through. Right, let's slacken this off. Oh God, there's fuel coming from everywhere apparently. Where's it coming from? Ah, okay. Where's the fuel? There's raining, it's raining petrol. Um, it's raining out of this pipe here. What's, what's this one? That's a lot of petrol on the floor down there. That was the original feed from the petrol tank. So why on earth is that? Yeah, this is the, this would have been going on to here. Oop, oop, Jim. Uh, this is the original feed that went into this pipe just here. But it's now full of fresh petrol. Well, I assume it's fresh petrol <clears throat> and I don't know why. I don't know if that's gravity or if that's or what. Let's have that pointing in a vertical position and see if it spouts fuel. No, that must just be air pressure from the return line taking that back and pushing it through that. Okay, let's just slacken this off and see if we've got a leak. Oh, we have, yeah, we've got leaking petrol just there, so there is fuel. The confusing thing is, every time I crank it, I do hear that little fut fut fut, just like something is trying to do something, but it's not quite doing it. Oh, this is very confusing. This is taking all the fun out of it, that's for sure. Yeah, that fuel line. There's that hard plastic, that definitely wants changing before I drive this anywhere. Mm. Right, so in lieu of any better or indeed good ideas, I've put the original um, coil back on, or the original new coil, that's the original original coil. Um, see if we get anything better off that. I can feel as far as the carburetors, I can smell something. Every time I crank it, there's a couple of fut futs at the beginning, then nothing else, which suggests something's happening, but then nothing else. Don't know what's going on. Two more fut futs that time. It's like a one, two, three, four, then it's over. So why is it not firing to life? Why is it not going boom and starting to work? Let's do more of this stuff. It's got to be a timing thing, isn't it? It must be timing. That's the only thing left for it to be not right on. Oh, it's so annoying. There's fuel coming out of there. That means there's fuel getting into the carburetors. Let's try the other carburetor as well. Oh, yep, petrol coming out of there as well. So we've got fuel pressure there and there, which means there's petrol getting as far as there. Honestly, I am confused. Everything was left set up so it would work last time uh, James was here. But the timing was set up right, we'd done everything as we checked everything possible. I just don't know why it won't go. We've got a good earth just there. Oops. Do we need a second earth? Do we need, I think that's a second earth anyway. Do we need a third earth on it? Just to make sure we get an even more earth to the body. Is that why it would not be working perhaps? More earth? Right, and that is now blocked up. It smells like terrible ancient varnish. So I'm assuming it's old fuel from the tank or the lines that's been blown back by air pressure from the return line. I'm assuming there's, a, yes, there is a return line. I can see that over there. I'm guessing it's air pressure into the tank blowing fuel out of this. So even just walking back into the garage after a few minutes, the smell of ancient varnishy petrol is quite overpowering. So I'm assuming that's old fuel, not new fuel. Right, the only thing left to do now is to kind of go back to basics again. We left this thing last time with everything set up so it should have worked. We had good spark, the timing was right. 
the fueling was working, everything was as it should be, and now it's not. There is no reason for it not to start. But we're now at about 20 minutes in this video, which is kind of like as far as the video needs to go. So next time it's gonna be back to basics, gonna set the timing again. I don't know what else to do really, just set the timing. It's getting fuel, it's not getting a spark, I don't know what else to do. Let's give this one final go and just kind of cross our fingers for it. So we've got fuel pressure, you can hear the pump has slowed down. We know we're getting a spark, and if it's getting a spark, it probably is in about right position. That was another double fut then. Oh, choke's not connected, I think. Maybe something's not connected on the, everything connected on the carburetor, all the, all the linkages. Choke, where's the choke doing? I've not got the choke connected. Where would you connect to? You'd connect to here and then you'd pull that like that, wouldn't you? Okay, so let's do both of those. Can I do both of those somehow? Let's chock both of these. Let's chock that one. And chock that as well somehow. Okay, so that's halfway chocked on the choke as well. Right, the last one, the last time before we go and give up on this for the day. Stupid thing. Dagnamit. Oh, you silly car. Why won't you go? What's not connected? What is, what is eluding me? Why won't you start? This is very, very annoying. Well, this is interesting. I've just pulled this plug out and it doesn't smell of petrol, but it does smell of easy start which is odd. Why would it not smell of petrol? Hmm, I'm just gonna give that a crank with no plug in there. Hmm, can't smell anything. Idea time. If I put a bit of wadded up paper in there, if there's petrol coming into there, it should get damp, shouldn't it? Well, it's blown out by the compression and it's bone dry. The petrol isn't going all the way from the start of the carburetors into there. Where is it stopping? Oh, man alive. Okay, I've got new investigations to do. Hmm. Now I'm confused. I'm more confused than I was before. There is petrol in there. There's petrol at the carburetors. Why is it not reaching the cylinders? And again, and just, just one final time. Okay. Thank you. Right, so with the help of an assistant, there is a spark I can see. It's not the strongest spark in the world, but it is a spark nonetheless. Uh, it's fuel delivery. That's all it can be. I need to go back to the drawing board and work out why fuel is not getting through doesn't make any sense. It really makes no sense at all. It's got to be fuel. It can only be a fueling issue. I just can't figure out why there's no fuel coming from here into there and into there. There's just no reason for it not to work. The carburetors are all clear and cleaned. We rebuilt them not long ago. I don't get it. I literally don't get it. 
at least one, even if I've gone really crazy with the mastic stuff, at least one cylinder will be getting petrol through and then that one will be coughing. We wouldn't just get that one single cough at the beginning and then that's that. I don't get it. I literally don't get it. I can't smell petrol on the spark plugs. Two spark plugs I've taken out now. Neither one of them I can smell petrol on. And the, uh, the blue paper test was a fail as well. I'm confused. I'm properly, properly confused here. Oh, one thing though, we've used a good half a can of petrol just gushed out of there and just vanished. So I don't know where the hell that's gone. Let's try a quick slop test. didn't make any difference. I'm hoping this petrol is going back down the return line, unburnt, straight into the fuel tank, because otherwise I'm just throwing petrol on the floor and I can't afford to be doing that at the current prices. Arr. Okay, next episode, taking bits of the fuel system apart. What else can I do? So confusing, so annoying and confusing. Right, okay, I might call this the end of the video at this point. I might come back in a few seconds time, so watch the runtime. If not, if I don't come back, then join me again next time when I have had some kind of breakthrough epiphany. Otherwise, see you again in a second. Uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll have this thing running soon. Fingers very much crossed. Hmm. Okay, this thing has beaten me for the day. I'm gonna call the video right now. I've had enough. I wanna go have some tea, edit the video, bang my head against the wall and do some research online. I don't know what on earth is not happening. So thank you for joining me. I really am sorry. I thought this was gonna be starting today and we'd actually be firing this thing up at last. Clearly, we're not. Next time, maybe, I don't know. I really hope so because it's now in a position where it really should be going. It just isn't. Why does this car hate me? This car hates me so much. Oh well, thank you for watching, and um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this, like and subscribe. As always, if you want to see any of the tools, um, basic stuff like the pliers, clever stuff like compression tester and the endoscope, then head over to the link in the description below for my Amazon affiliate store where you can find all this stuff for sale online. And join me again next time, and maybe we'll hear a V8 roar into life. You might not, though, who knows? Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.